Welcome to lesson number six for beginners. Question is, is this lesson for beginners only? Stay tuned. Hello, friends and neighbors. Woo. Hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome. Hey, 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 hey. Good day, friends and neighbors. Welcome back to the Brownstone. You know who it is. Today's lesson is all about something that we tend to forget about, and it doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or an intermediate player or a professional. We tend to forget about triad inversions. These can be the hippest things for any player. And the reason why I'm putting this in the beginner series is because we do not emphasize enough how important these things are. And we should be doing that from the very beginning. So that's what I'm going to do today. So if you're a beginner, you're coming in right at the right time. And if you're an intermediate player or an advanced or professional player, then I hope this serves as a reminder for some of the things about triads that you might have forgotten about. So what do I mean by triad inversions? If you remember lesson number five, we talked about triads. I introduced the idea of playing the triads on the bass and playing them in different positions. Today, I really want to stress the idea of learning the shapes of the inversions of those triads. What do I mean by that? I'll show you. If I have a G major triad, I've got G as my root note, B is the major third, and then D. Now, again, with the triad, all I'm doing is I'm playing the notes of the scale. So I've got a G major scale happening there. So I'm playing simply the first, third, and fifth note of the scale to get my triad. Now, I've got three notes happening there, G, B, and D. If I want to play the first inversion of that triad, then I will start that three note sequence from the middle note and put my root note up on top, which means I start at the B, that major third, I go up to the D, the fifth, and then the G that I started with gets raised an octave and played there. So here's the root position of the triad, one, three, five, and then here's the first inversion of the triad, which is three, five, one, three, five, and then the one up top. So that three, five, one creates a certain shape on the fingerboard, and I want you to understand that shape. This is why I am putting this in the beginner's series, because we tend to skip over this very important information when we're learning the triads. So just understand that shape. And when I say understand that shape, I mean really check out what is happening physically. You have this four fret span, and that's fully used within the first two notes. I've got the third of the scale where I'm starting from, moving up to the fifth of the scale. That's my fifth. And then moving from the fifth up to the octave, the root, octave of the root. Um, most of the time, moving from the fifth to the root will be on the same fret. So that's the makeup of the first inversion of the triad. But again, there's more than one shape. If I change the position of that B and place that B on the E string, that B will now be located at the seventh fret of the E string. That's a B, that's also a B. Again, seventh fret of the E string or third dot. So if I change that one note and then keep the other two notes the same, I get a different shape. So that's my first inversion of the triad. Right? The notes again, B to D to G. B to D to G. 
Why is this important? I'll tell you why. And this is the thing that we tend to forget about. Um, usually when we're playing through songs, especially like in a jazz context, or it doesn't even have to be in a jazz context, um, when we see a chord, we tend to go straight for the root of that chord. You see a G major on a page, you play G. It's instinctive. That's just what you do. But this is the reason why I wanted to get you in on the ground floor with learning the triad inversions, because the third on the root of a chord is money. So this is all about getting your ear used to that sound. So practice those two shapes, right? That's the first inversion of a major triad. This is gonna come into play heavily in future lessons. So we've been talking about the idea of learning the shapes, the two shapes being created by the first inversion of the major uh, triad. If I wanted to take those two shapes and turn them into the first inversions of a minor triad, then all I would have to do is take the third, the major third, and make it flat, bring it down by a semitone. That's all. When I do that, I get the first inversion of a, of a minor triad. So here I'm playing B to D to G. B is my third, my major third. If I bring that B down to a B flat, and keep the other two notes the same, I get the first inversion of a minor triad. Why? Because we have already established in the previous lesson that the G minor triad is going to have these three notes, G, B flat and D. So G major triad, G minor triad. The first inversion of the major and the first inversion of the minor, B flat. And then I can do the same thing for the other shape. Remember we moved that B down to the seventh fret of the E string. So, first inversion of the major, first inversion of the minor. Right? Just bringing that B down a semitone to B flat. And again, every time I do that, every time I make a shift, I really want to understand what's going on in the fingerboard so I can learn that shape and get the shape into the muscle memory. Now, that shape of putting the B flat and the D on the same string can be a bit of a stretch, but check out what happens when we move that B flat down to the E string. We have this very simple shape. So, sixth fret of the E string and then the fifth fret of the D and, uh, sorry, of the A and D strings. So remember that shape. That particular shape, again, is the first inversion of a minor triad. And if I bring that B flat up to a B natural at the seventh fret of the E string, I get the first inversion of a major triad. So here's what I want you to do. Uh, I'm gonna have you play a little bit. Just a very simple exercise where you go back and forth between the two triads. And what I want you to do is first play the root note. We're gonna stay on G. So we're gonna play that root note of G a little bit long. If I'm, if I'm counting a 4-4 four, four bar, let's say that that G is gonna be held for a half note. So if my tempo is here, I'm going to play that first note of G as a half note, and the rest are gonna be quarter notes. So it'll sound like this. Two, three, four. And then the triad. Then come back. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then the minor. And you can play this minor using any shape. 
or any of the two shapes. I'll use them both. And then I'll go back to the major. So here's what I'll do. I'll play this shape one time through. You can listen to what's going on here. And then when I switch to the minor, I'll play this shape with the third and the fifth on the same string, going down to the B flat on the A string. Now I'll play the exercise again and I'll use, whoops, it's hard to talk at the same time. I'll use the E string for my thirds. B here, my third. G. B, D, G. Now to the minor with the B flat at the sixth fret of the E string. that's the lesson. I'm going to review this slowly for the beginners just to make sure the fingering is comfortable and you know what you're doing um, with both hands. Although this is lesson number six. So hopefully you are comfortable with all the previous lessons and you've worked your way up to this point. I'm going to start this exercise one more time. Again, all we're doing is we are playing the uh, root positions of these triads and the first inversions of these triads. And by playing the root note, in this case G, as a half note, I'm creating a little bit of separation. And because of that separation, you're going to start to hear that third a little more um, prominently, I guess. So here's the exercise. I play G major. And what I'm doing is I'm playing second finger on that G first finger on the B. I'm using my little finger to play the D. You can also use your third finger. If you use your third finger, then try to use your little finger to get underneath your third finger to access the G at the fifth fret of the D string. Right? So here's my second finger on G, first finger on B, Moving down to the um, fifth fret with my third finger and then placing my little finger under my third finger to get the fifth fret of the D string. So I have this. That's the deal. So then when I play the exercise, I have the choice of playing with that third finger or using the little finger and barring both of those notes at the fifth fret. So again, you can either use your third finger for D and then your little finger for the G up top, or use your little finger and bar for both of those notes. Whatever is easier for you, that's what's going to work. So now I'll play through the exercise again. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And I'll switch to minor now, to the B flat on the A string, first fret of the A string. Now I'll switch to the other position and I will play uh, the B and the B flat on the E string. B is at the seventh fret of the E string, B flat is at the sixth fret of the E string. So for that, I will play my first finger on the G. I'll play with my little finger at the seventh fret of the E string. And then I can bar with my first finger on those last two notes, the D and the G. You can also use your third finger 
on that B. I'll keep, him, I'll keep playing the major so you can see. Little finger at the seventh fret of the E string. Or third finger, make that jump. Now I'll switch to minor. Here, I can also play little finger, but check that out. So what I did there was I played little finger at the uh, sixth fret of the E string, and then I grabbed D with my second finger, and then put my third finger underneath to get the G on the top as the top note. So I have this pattern. So that's first finger, little finger, second finger, third finger. I don't know if you heard, but the first time I played that, there was a little bit of buzzing happening. That's me not placing my finger in the right position. Uh, this is something that I covered maybe in the first lesson. You want your fingers to be right up close to the fret, almost on top of it, but not quite. If you're hearing any buzzing like that when you're playing, that's usually the cause. So make sure that you're playing as close to the fret as possible, just as a general rule. So that's the exercise. Go two times major. And then two times minor. Now switch positions and put the B and the B flat on the E string. Two times major. Using whatever finger is most comfortable. And then two times minor. So that should really get you um, accustomed to the shape of the root position of the triad and the first, per the first inversion of the triad. And that's the lesson. Friends and neighbors, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, all that business. Uh, I want to thank all those people who have donated, uh, made contributions, joined the channel, super thanks, all that stuff. It amazes me every single time when I get the notifications. Uh, it's hard to keep up with all of them. So that's why you haven't heard from me uh, with the thank yous. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it all. Like, share, subscribe, join the channel, donate with super thanks or a direct uh, donation, which will be linked in the description box below. All of it, all of it is so greatly appreciated. I cannot begin to tell you how much. Um, and this is lesson number six in the beginner series. There's much more to come. And I do not want to forget the five string and six string players out there. There's plenty coming down the pike for y'all as well. And I'm going to leave it there. Friends and neighbors, as always, I thank you for tuning in. Spend some time with me here in the Brownstone and I will see you in the next video. Peace.